In this tutorial, we'd like to look at the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem is perhaps the most famous of all theorems related to geometry. And it's important that you keep in mind that Pythagorean theorem applies only to right triangles. So here's a right triangle pictured. I'm sure you already know that a right triangle is a triangle that has a right angle. It's important that you know the names of the parts of the right triangle. So the two sides of the triangle that intersect to form the right angle are called legs. So here's a leg, here's the other leg. The side across from the right angle is called the hypotenuse. So a Pythagorean theorem applies specifically to right triangles. I'd like you to become a little bit more familiar with it. So let's look at the wording of the Pythagorean theorem. In words, the Pythagorean, Pythagorean theorem states, in a right triangle, the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs is equal to the square of the length of the hypotenuse. And what does that mean for these triangles here? Let's look at the triangle labeled ABC. A and B are the legs because they intersect to form a right angle, and C is the hypotenuse. So symbolically, that would mean that A squared plus B squared equals C squared, where A, B, and C are the lengths of the sides of this triangle. The triangle labeled D, E, and F. D and E are the legs. F is the hypotenuse. So D squared plus E squared is equal to F squared. And the last triangle labeled X, Y, and Z. Z is the hypotenuse. X and Y are the legs because they intersect to form the right angle. So X squared plus Y squared is equal to Z squared. Notice that the length of the hypotenuse gets to be on one side of the equal sign by itself. Let's look at an area approach to the Pythagorean theorem. What does this really mean? If I take a right triangle and place it in a coordinate plane, here I have a triangle whose side lengths are 3 and 4. It's legs. You can see this by counting in the coordinate plane. So what does it mean to have the length of the leg squared? Let's look at this side length that is 4 units. If I take this 4 units and I square it, I essentially get a square of side length 4. This square of side length 4 has 16 square units inside it, which you can see by counting. The other leg has side length 3. If I square that, I'll have a square with side length 3. So inside here, I should have 9 square units, which you can see by counting. Okay, the sum of these, 9 plus 16, should be equal to the square of the length of the hypotenuse. So here's a square that represents the length of the hypotenuse squared. Now it should be that this is 16 plus 9, or 25 square units. Perhaps it's a little bit hard to see this, since it's not really you know, straight on the coordinate plane. So if I look at this picture, and I take this triangle, and I just kind of move I'm sorry, if I take this square and I just kind of move it off the hypotenuse over here, you can see that this is in fact a square of side length 5. So there are in fact 25 square units in here. So you can see that it is true that 3 squared plus 4 squared is equal to 5 squared. Okay. Let's look at three examples, and these you should write down in your notes. In each of these triangles, we're going to find the length of the missing side. Now, this triangle at the top labeled 12 and 9 for the legs, and C for the hypotenuse. So let's start by stating the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. C squared. Substitute in 12 and 9 for the legs. So 9 squared plus 12 squared is equal to C squared which means 81 plus 144 is equal to c squared, which means 225 is equal to c squared. Take the square root of 225, and I get c is equal to 15. So the side lengths of this triangle are 9, 12, and 15 units. The second triangle, instead of having the hypotenuse as the unknown side, I have one of the legs as the unknown side. So let's start with, again, stating the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. But make sure you pay attention to which side represents the hypotenuse. So it should be that B squared plus 24 squared is equal to 26 squared. Let's simplify this. It means 576 plus B squared is equal to 676. Subtract the 576 from each side. And I get B squared is equal to 100. And B is therefore 10 units.
So this triangle has side lengths 10, 24, and 26. Notice that in both cases the hypotenuse was the longer side. <clears throat> One more example. Here I have a triangle with legs represented by 5 and 6 and again asking you to find the hypotenuse. So let's start with the hypotenuse. Let's start with a statement of the Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Substitute in the 5 and the 6 for the legs. 5 squared plus 6 squared is equal to c squared, which means 25 plus 36 is equal to c squared. Combine this, so 61 is equal to c squared. Take the square root of each side, and I should have the square root of 61 is equal to c. Now, you can leave your answer as a simplified radical, or you can give me an approximation as a decimal. It depends on what the problem calls for. I just don't want you to think you're always going to get an integer answer. You will not always get an integer answer. But that's kind of a quick summary of the Pythagorean theorem. The thing I'd like you to remember is Pythagorean theorem applies only to right triangles and is particularly useful when you want to find one side length in a triangle when the other two side lengths are known. Make sure you wrote the examples down, and make sure you do the practice problems in your homework.